Gardening isn't just a hobby, it's a revolutionary act. Imagine breaking free from overpriced, tasteless supermarket produce and cultivating your own fresh, nutrient-rich fruits and vegetables right in your backyard. The exhilaration of harvesting your own crops, witnessing your garden flourish, and experiencing the incredible therapeutic benefits of working with nature is unmatched. In this guide, we'll expose the secrets to creating your own garden paradise, from strategic planning and soil preparation to planting and essential maintenance. Get ready to arm yourself with the knowledge and confidence to start your gardening journey, guaranteeing not only a productive, but also an immensely satisfying experience. Buckle up, because your path to self-sufficiency and unparalleled garden success starts here. Now, let's begin with choosing the right location for your garden. Selecting the optimal spot is crucial for its success. Ensure the chosen area receives at least six to eight hours of direct sunlight per day, as most vegetables and herbs require abundant sunlight to thrive. Proximity to a water source is essential to make watering your plants convenient and consistent. Additionally, consider exposure to wind and extreme weather. Choosing a location that offers some protection from strong winds and harsh conditions will help safeguard your plants and promote healthier growth. Next, let's talk about deciding what to grow. When deciding what to plant, start by assessing your climate zone. Understanding your USDA hardiness zone will guide you in selecting plants that are well suited to your environment. Choose plants that match your local climate and soil type for the best results. For beginners, start with easy to grow vegetables and herbs such as tomatoes, basil, and lettuce. These plants are forgiving and provide a rewarding gardening experience, helping you gain confidence and skills. Once you've decided what to grow, it's time to design your garden layout. Designing your garden layout involves careful planning to maximize space and plant health. Proper spacing is vital to prevent overcrowding, which can lead to poor air circulation and increased susceptibility to pests and diseases. Incorporating crop rotation and companion planting into your design helps manage pest control naturally and improves soil health over time. Plan for the mature size of your plants, ensuring they have enough room to grow and flourish. This foresight will help maintain a balanced and productive garden. Now, let's move on to soil preparation. Understanding your soil's pH and nutrient levels is the first step in soil preparation. Use a home soil test kit or send a sample to a local extension service to determine these levels. Most garden plants thrive in a pH range of 6 to 7. If your soil is too acidic or alkaline, amend it by adding lime to raise the pH or sulfur to lower it. Improving soil fertility and structure is crucial for healthy plant growth. Incorporate compost, manure, or other organic matter into your soil to enhance its nutrient content and water holding capacity. Compost adds essential nutrients and beneficial microorganisms, while manure provides a rich source of nitrogen. If your soil is heavy and clayey, adding sand or organic matter can improve its drainage and aeration. Tilling the soil involves breaking it up and turning it over to prepare a planting bed. This process aerates the soil, controls weeds, and incorporates organic matter. Use a garden fork or rototiller to till the soil to a depth of about 8 to 12 inches. However, avoid over-tilling as it can damage soil structure and beneficial organisms. Mulching is the practice of covering the soil surface with a protective layer of material. Various types of mulch include straw, wood chips, and grass clippings. Mulch helps retain soil moisture, suppress weeds, and regulate soil temperature. It also adds organic matter to the soil as it decomposes, further enhancing soil fertility and structure. After preparing your soil, it's time to start planting. Starting seeds indoors offers several advantages. It allows for an early start, providing a controlled environment that shields young plants from pests and harsh weather conditions. This method is ideal for plants that require a longer growing season, such as tomatoes, peppers, and eggplants. Use seed trays and a light sterile seed starting mix to ensure good germination. Place the trays in a sunny window or undergrow lights and keep the soil consistently moist. Direct sowing involves planting seeds directly in the garden. This method is best for plants that grow quickly and don't transplant well, such as carrots, radishes, and peas. Follow the seed packet instructions for planting depth and spacing. Ensure the soil is warm enough for germination and keep it moist until the seeds sprout. Before transplanting seedlings started indoors, they need to be hardened off. This process involves gradually exposing them to outdoor conditions to prevent shock. 
Start by placing the seedlings outside in a sheltered area for a few hours each day, gradually increasing the exposure over a week or two. When transplanting, handle the seedlings gently to avoid damaging the roots. Dig a hole in the garden bed that is large enough to accommodate the root ball. Place the seedling in the hole, backfill with soil, and press gently around the base to remove air pockets. Water immediately after planting to help settle the soil and provide moisture to the roots. Correct planting depth and spacing are essential for healthy plant growth. Plant seeds at the depth recommended on the seed packet, usually about two to three times the diameter of the seed. For seedlings, plant them at the same depth they were in their containers. Proper spacing prevents overcrowding, which can lead to poor air circulation and increased susceptibility to pests and diseases. Water the plants immediately after planting to settle the soil and provide moisture. This initial watering helps the plants establish roots in their new environment and promotes healthy growth. Now let's discuss garden care and maintenance. Effective watering practices are crucial for a thriving garden. The best approach is deep, infrequent watering rather than shallow, frequent watering. Deep watering encourages plants to develop deeper root systems, making them more resilient to drought. This method involves soaking the soil thoroughly, allowing water to penetrate to a depth of at least six to eight inches. Shallow watering only wets the surface, leading to weaker roots and plants more susceptible to stress. Watering in the morning is ideal as it reduces evaporation and gives plants time to absorb moisture before the heat of the day. Morning watering also helps prevent the spread of diseases as the foliage has time to dry before nightfall, reducing the likelihood of fungal infections. Fertilizing provides essential nutrients that plants need for healthy growth. There are two main types of fertilizers, organic and synthetic. Organic fertilizers such as compost, manure, and bone meal release nutrients slowly and improve soil structure. They are ideal for long-term soil health. Synthetic fertilizers provide immediate nutrient availability and can be tailored to specific plant needs but do not improve soil structure. The timing and application of fertilizers are critical for optimal plant growth. Apply fertilizers during the active growing season, typically in early spring and midsummer. Follow the manufacturer's instructions for application rates and methods. Over-fertilizing can harm plants and the environment, so use fertilizers judiciously. Weeding is essential for maintaining a healthy garden, as weeds compete with your plants for nutrients, water, and light. Preventative measures like using mulch, ground covers, and proper spacing can significantly reduce weed growth. Mulch helps suppress weeds by blocking light and providing a physical barrier. Effective weeding techniques include hand pulling, hoeing, and using weed barriers. Hand pulling is best done when the soil is moist, making it easier to remove the entire root. Hoeing is effective for removing weeds from larger areas. Weed barriers, such as landscape fabric, can prevent weeds from emerging while allowing water and nutrients to pass through. Identifying and controlling pests and diseases is crucial for garden health. Common garden pests include aphids, caterpillars, and slugs, while common diseases include powdery mildew, blight, and rust. Regularly inspect your plants for signs of pests and diseases, such as holes in leaves, discolored foliage, or stunted growth. Organic control methods include introducing beneficial insects like ladybugs and lacewings, using insecticidal soaps and applying neem oil. Chemical control methods, while effective, should be used sparingly and as a last resort to avoid harming beneficial insects and the environment. Preventative measures such as crop rotation and companion planting can help reduce pest and disease problems. Crop rotation involves changing the location of crops each year to prevent pests and diseases from building up in the soil. Companion planting uses certain plants to naturally deter pests. For example, planting marigolds can repel nematodes and other harmful insects. Finally, let's talk about harvesting and enjoying your garden. Knowing when to harvest your vegetables and fruits is key to enjoying the best flavor and nutritional value. Each type of produce has specific signs that indicate it is ready to be picked. For instance, tomatoes should be firm, yet slightly soft to the touch and have a deep, consistent color. Lettuce is best harvested when the leaves are tender and before they start to bolt which means the plant is beginning to flower and will become bitter. Root vegetables like carrots and beets should be harvested when they have reached the desired size, usually indicated by the diameter of the visible top. The best time of day to harvest your produce is early in the morning. During this time, plants are most hydrated and the temperatures are cooler, 
which helps preserve the freshness and flavor of your harvest. Harvesting in the morning also minimizes stress on the plants and allows them to recover throughout the day. Proper post-harvest care is essential to maintaining the quality and extending the shelf life of your produce. Different types of produce require specific storage techniques. For example, leafy greens like lettuce and spinach should be washed, dried thoroughly, and stored in the refrigerator in a breathable container or plastic bag with holes. Root vegetables like carrots and beets should have their tops removed and be stored in a cool, dark place or the refrigerator. <laughs> Using your harvest in the kitchen can be a rewarding experience. Fresh produce can be used in a variety of basic recipes. For example, tomatoes can be sliced and used in salads or sandwiches, or cooked down into sauces. Herbs like basil can be made into pesto, or used to flavor various dishes. Preservation methods such as canning, freezing, and drying allow you to enjoy your garden's bounty long after the growing season has ended. Canning tomatoes or making jams from berries can provide delicious additions to your pantry, while freezing vegetables like peas and beans maintains their freshness and nutrients for future use. By following these guidelines for harvesting and post-harvest care, you can ensure that you enjoy the full benefits of your garden. Proper timing and techniques not only enhance the flavor and nutritional value of your produce, but also allow you to savor your garden's bounty throughout the year. For more gardening content, including tips for beginners, subscribe to our channel. Until next time, happy gardening!